through peaks and valleys, gains and losses, market manipulation, normalization, and everything you can possibly think of happening, we have now come to the end of our series, Investments Odyssey. Do not fret though, soldier, because another Investment Odyssey is on the horizon. Another season of Investment Odyssey is coming up soon, so make sure you're staying tuned to the channel for that. In this video, essentially all we're going to be doing is taking a look at what our best investments were for Investment Odyssey, some of the pros of the series, some things I'm going to change for the future, and also some new things I'm going to implement in Investment Odyssey Season 2. And basically this is going to be a big reflection video and kind of showing off what were really good investments and what weren't great investments and some of our gains and losses. I'm also going to be showing you guys the all said and done final balance at the very end of the video so make sure you stick around for that. Before we get to that though let's go ahead and take a look at our sponsor. The sponsor for today's video is skinport.com. They're a great site with a very clean minimalistic UI that's going to make buying skins for your own investment odyssey a very clean and smooth endeavor. If you want to go ahead and check them out they have over a hundred thousand items listed on the site at great prices all around. I highly 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 upvote them, so if you want to go ahead and check them out, use the link in the description below to support my channel. Also, one quick note before this video starts, if you want to make sure you're staying up to date on the release of Season 2, and if you want to connect with me a little bit closer, I do have a Discord server and a Twitter that you can both follow and join in the description below. It's great places, ran by a great staff team, so make sure to check those out. Alright guys, so the first episode of Investment Odyssey was uploaded on March 11th in 2020, and that means that this series has now spanned a total of 5 months. Some of the episodes were released exactly 2 weeks after the previous one, and some of the episodes were released a little bit later so there was a little bit of weirdness with that but in total it took about five months to finish this entire series. Our original goal was to set out with $500 and make $1,000 total so let's go ahead and see if that even happened. Keep in mind some of these items were bought on cash sites like Buff, some of them were bought on third-party marketplaces like Skinport which you can use with the link in the description below by the way, wink wink, and also some of these items were bought on the Steam Community Marketplace so there was a good general price range to go from and basically what we were originally going for was 1,000 total Steam value. But because that was hit so easily, we actually ended up going instead for a thousand total cash value based on buff balance. After some calculations, it turns out that we needed about 950 USD in buff balance to actually meet our goal. Unfortunately, after that calculation was made, the value of RMB actually changed, so it ended up pushing it a little bit farther out of the range of what we were at. So once I had started already selling stuff, the value of RMB changed, and that ended up kind of creating a weird area where we didn't end up with exactly 950 USD, but we ended up with very, very close to it, so you're going to see that at the end of the video. Let's talk about some of our biggest gainers though because that's one of the most interesting things about this series, analyzing what items did super well and what items did not do so well. Keep in mind the purpose of this series was to give you guys a wide range of different investments which is why multiple times I did not recommend exactly following Investment Odyssey to a T. I recommended kind of finding stuff that you liked from Investment Odyssey and then implementing that into your own portfolio and then optimizing from there. I purposely did not optimize the investment portfolio to the maximum amount that it could have been optimized because that would have been really boring and wouldn't have been very entertaining to watch. So starting with skins, our biggest gainer for skins was actually the M4A4 Daybreak Factory New. This was not one that I was expecting to actually do as good as it did. I did expect it to rise in price, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it, but it actually did phenomenal. It did way better than I was expecting. We were able to buy into this item for about 60 USD Steam, and we were able to sell it for about 100 USD Steam, which is just absolutely crazy. It's about a two times increase. The thing is, though, and even though it's about a two times gainer, it was a huge amount of gained profit on just one single skin, which is why I consider it the biggest gainer. Some other honorable mentions are going to be the AK-47 Jet Set, which we were able to buy in for about 100 USD Steam, and then that one actually shot up to around 200 USD Steam, but we weren't going to be able to sell it for that because the buy orders were not matching the sell price, so it ended up pulling back to around 150 USD Steam, which is about where we sold it at. The Desert Eagle Armored Roman Gunter and the Op Asimov Field Tested were both very good choices as well, and did exactly what I expected them to do. The Op Asimov I really expected to just be a solid item to pick up and get some nice clean profit off of, which is what happened, and we were able to make solid profit margins on that pretty much every single week. It was a really good stable item to hold on to. The Emerald German Gunder did rise a pretty decent amount. We were able to get it pretty cheaply and make about 25% profit on it, while the Op Asimov we were able to make another about 25% profit on. In terms of skins and in terms of how long this investment actually lasted, these were great pickups. On to stickers, we actually had a lot of crazy ones. One of the big ones though was the LDLC non Hollow Cologne 2014, which we bought in for about $4.50 each for three of them, and we ended up selling them at about $15 each on Steam value. Goldweb Foils also did pretty phenomenal. We were able to buy into those for about $4.50 Steam, and we were able to sell them for about $12 Steam. The Cloud9, Navi, and Fnatic Clone 2014 non-hollows also did pretty similar, netting us about two times profit each. 
Beach. Another one that I did not expect to do so well was the Ninjas in Pajamas Dreamhack 2014 Hollow, which we bought into for about $20 on Steam and sold for about $45 Steam value. One of the sleeper hits that did phenomenally well was the Vexed Gaming stickers that we bought into. We bought them for about 7 USD on Steam, and then they went up to around 20 USD on Steam, which were phenomenal returns. Moving on to consumables, we actually bought the Cato 19 Team Capsules, which did phenomenally well. We bought those for about $8 each and sold them at around 16 so about a 2 times profit on those. Shadow Rub cases were huge for us as well. We bought around 20 of them for a dollar and 10 cents each, and then we ended up selling them for a two dollars and 60 cents each, so more than a two times profit on those each, which was huge. Other than that, there aren't a lot of other super remarkable things that ended up happening for our portfolio, but generally we saw a lot of returns on pretty much everything, and by the end of the series, we were pretty much green on everything that we bought. We tracked our portfolio using Excel, and originally we had an auto updating system going, but that ended up breaking, so we had to manually update everything, which worked out, you know, pretty much as well as it could have. However, one big change I'm going to be implementing in season two is actually an auto tracking portfolio made by one of the moderators in my Discord server who's doing a really great job on it, and I'm not going to go ahead and like leak details of it just in case he wants to keep it private for now, but at the moment it's going really, really well. So this is our final buff balance at the moment. We were selling everything on buff because it just made things easy. Our target goal before we had sold anything was 6,400 RMB, which would have been 950 USD at the time, and we ended up making 6,200 RMB, which is still really, really good. I'd say being 200 RMB off is perfectly fine considering that we had to do everything and then sell everything after we made the calculations, so there was going to obviously be a big time problem there, and 200 RMB for that time problem is pretty good. Everything actually sold really, really easily. Everything except one single item. Now, we had two Caddos, which I knew were going to take a long time to sell, and I was accounting for that, of course, and one of the Caddos actually did take a little bit longer to sell, and we were able to still sell it in the end, which was good. However, the one thorn in the entire portfolio. So we got this M4A4 for around 450 RMB, and our target goal to sell it at was around 550 RMB for a total of 100 RMB profit. And we actually had some buyers lined up that were perfectly prepared to go ahead and pick the item up. However, they ended up running into some issues, which caused us to go down a long path of dropping the price of it until we ended up at its final price, which was unfortunately this. Not really a huge loss, but in the grand scheme of things, it does end up working out, which is pretty cool. Both Caddos did not exactly perform to the expectations that I had for them, which which was a little bit unfortunate to see because I was pretty hyped about them doing well as investments, and they actually kinda did. These were good items to buy into, and they were solid investments that could have had really big returns on them, but because of the time crunch I was under and trying to sell them for this finale of Investment Odyssey, but I fully believe if we were to wait on them and wait for the right buyer, we would have made a lot of profit on each of these items, and so if you do end up investing in two Caddo items, I would totally recommend just holding on to them and taking your time with selling them, and you're going to be able to make some big money on them. That pretty much sums up that part of Investment Odyssey for the finale. The last thing I'm going to do before I get on to talking about Season 2 of Investment Odyssey is going ahead and looking at our spreadsheets and looking at our weekly investment gains and losses. So we ended up tracking four total investment periods, but we should have actually started tracking it a little bit earlier. I implemented this change in Investment Odyssey Episode 5. I didn't actually start tracking the investment periods until a bit later into the series, which is actually a little unfortunate. I wish that I did it a little bit earlier when I first started the series so that I had a good record of everything, but that's something that we're just going to have to change for the next season. It was a really cool idea though, and it helped me conceptualize and kind of give a good idea of what the weeks were doing for us. We saw pretty big gains overall with a total of $200 gained over the four investment periods that we tracked. Our biggest investment period for these tracked periods was the fourth one, which gained us over $100 in value, which was huge. We only saw a loss in one of these periods, which was period two, where we lost around $12, but that did not end up mattering in the grand scheme of things. All right, so that about covers everything, all of the biggest gainers and losers and all of the cool investment periods that we had and the big profits that we made and what items did really good and what items I would buy again in the future. And also talked a little bit about season two already, so the final thing to do until we talk about season two for this video is going to be answering the question did we actually complete the challenge so because we ended up focusing our goal more on the cash value side of things we ended up using buff to sell our items and trying to get a thousand dollars on there we ended up focusing it more towards 950 dollars as our goal just because buff is a bit cheaper than other sites so we can go ahead and take off that five percent and we ended up getting 6200 out of 6400 of our original goal which ends up at the moment being around 900 usd not 950 however this is largely due to the RMB shift, and this would be a little bit more valuable if it didn't shift in value. Regardless, I would still call this a 
smashing success. Even though we were a little bit off, we were still pretty much able to get this total value if we would have waited on those counters, for example, and not sold them for lower prices. But all in all, I would definitely say this was a successful $1,000, a successful two times profit gain. Okay, with that out of the way, we can move on to talking a little bit about season two and then closing up this video. So first of all, season two does not have a very set start date. I'm going to start it sometime soon in the soonish future, but I don't really know exactly when. I will let you guys know with updates in the Discord server and also like maybe a trailer or something that might be cool. Some changes you can expect for season two is a smaller initial and a larger end goal. So the series is going to be longer than season one, which I think is going to be a good change because it's going to really get in depth about selling and buying new items. We're going to be having an auto updating spreadsheet and a lot of new things to check out for investment purposes. So I think it's going to be really valuable for new people to look at. If you do want to check out season one, you can of course go to the playlist that I have created and that's going to have every episode of season one of Investment Odyssey. There's also of course going to be big improvements to the editing and a few other logistical things on the production side of things for season two, which I think is going to be cool as well. And I really kind of like the format though of the every two weeks because that gives us a good little investment period to track each time we make a new episode. So I think that's pretty much how it's going to stay. In terms of the sister series to this, Trading Adventure, which ended up getting sort of put on hiatus just because of how complicated it was and how many moving parts we had to deal with, that may or may not come back in the future. I'm still kind of considering that. That's kind of just on hiatus for now. Anyway, that's about all the time I want to take up for this finale. Thank you guys for checking out Investment Odyssey and supporting me throughout the series. I think it's a really cool thing that you guys were able to, you know, stick around and check out all the episodes and watch them and really support me on them. I really, really do appreciate that. Hopefully you guys are going to enjoy Season 2 once it launches. Again, be sure to check out the Discord server in the description below to get updates on when that goes live. Anyway, again, really thank you guys for checking out the series and thank you guys for all the support you've put on it. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you think and let's go ahead and check out the subscribe button as well because I give you guys all the best and fastest investment tips anywhere else on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out that like button and of course, click that if you want to go ahead and support the video and push it for the algorithm. And of course, check out my social links and my skin port link in the description below to go ahead and support the channel directly. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you all next time. Peace.